now, Debbie is going to talk about um, people and the role of um, emerging work that she has done and papers that she has published on um, uh, making our data, the names, the specimens, all of that kind of thing, more accessible and more relevant by linking it to people. So Debbie, you could take it away. Very cool. Thank you very much for that introduction, Matt. I would like to start off with a quick poll. Let's take a look quickly. So we see a distribution here, which you might expect. Uh, you might ask yourself, uh, will you be known by more aliases as time goes by? How do people find you? Uh, how do they know which names equate to you? And, and what can we do with those if every single one of those ways of knowing you is attached to a unique identifier, what would be possible? And for those of you who are familiar with Bionomia, you can act as a bridge to those here who are new to that, which I can see uh, from the 21 people who answered, um, like 52% said they are not sure what Bionomia is. With that, I'm going to go quickly through my slides and hope we can talk about this more at the unconference as well. So here we go. So the agenda, yes, as I wanted to point back out that it's people that make all this possible. You're the ones wanting to do this work, use the work, expand the work, connect the work. Um, so th these are, you're the ones bringing the questions to what is it we want to be able to do. Um, so how can we get the information that's locked up in our various resources, which would be inside your head, that's here in the iceberg underneath, uh, inside your databases, inside your spreadsheets, um, inside your team notebooks, whatever those are. How do we in the past and going forward ensure that we can connect the dots? Um, you may know that Jay Utrip and Jay Baisley are the same person, but I might not. And she might have specimens in my database under one name and in your database or your project file or your paper under another. How do we discover uh, these and how do we share this information and why do we want to in the first place? So keeping all of that in mind, you know, we know already that data, oh, and speaking of Jess, yes, I just let her in. How very, what the cooler timing. Um, anyway, so people are definitely duplicated across our databases and our spreadsheets, et cetera. And it's isolated. We, we don't have a, the best way of necessarily sharing it with each other, let alone the fact that it's in our heads. And if we leave the planet or move on to another project, we also lose that information. And yet at the same time, we know people need credit for the work that they do. The institutions themselves need that and want to track it. Uh, this is a paper that pointed out, uh, how do we do credit and attribution? And is there a, a way in which we could improve that situation? So. We need to share knowledge in new ways. And there are some ways now uh, available to us to give you examples of what I'm talking about. I don't have time to go into details. I can give you a lot more uh, citations than just this one that you see at the bottom here. Essentially promote the use of identifiers for people, um, increase the number of people using ORCIDs in our collection and get Wikidata queue numbers, for example, for people that are, are no longer on the planet. And what we're really underlying here is culture change in the way we think about credit and attribution uh, rather than being some tagline in an end slide. So moving very quickly here, I think you have the idea. We store people as not people, we store them as strings. Who is Jay Shorthouse? I don't know, do you? Uh, we store people like this. When we begin to also have an identifier for that person, then no matter whether your database has Josephine Cornelia Austin and my database has C. Bruce, if I have this ID, I know we're talking about the same person. And we can coalesce this person's work and knowledge and expertise in a way we can't do definitively without this ID. Bionomia, you can Google it, is a way that gives us power to assign identifiers to people who are no longer with us and to claim our own specimens and the specimens of others who are currently on the planet. So we can facilitate GBIF's ability um, to help us know more about how our data are being used. This is an example. Again, I'm happy to talk about it more. Um, you end up with a profile. 
and you end up being able to also publish your data to Zenodo, where you can see Zoe's data have now, uh, what she's collected or identified, been downloaded over 370 times when I made this screenshot. So what about in TaxonWorks and what's in your database? In TaxonWorks, we can store as many IDs for you as you would like. Uh, we currently have a, the concept of a local ID and a global ID. In this instance, uh, Jen has both an ORCID and a Wikidata identifier. She has indeed, through her ORCID and her Wikidata page, she has lots of aliases and has published her profile. And again, this allows us to know that Jennifer C and JC are the same entity. Given that, what does it look like inside TaxonWorks? Here's Tommy. We can get some notion because someone has shared their metadata of his active years. This can help you and others. And in TaxonWorks, indeed, much like Matt pointed out that sources are shared, people are shared across all projects inside TaxonWorks. Two minutes, Deb. Thank you. So if I do this work, uh, you benefit, and you don't have to go searching on the web to figure this out. Uh, the aliases are uh, gathered here. And again, you can imagine they relate to different types of objects in the database, right? It might be how Tommy is known as an author of a taxon name, how Tommy is known uh, for particular on a particular specimen label, for example. Here's another visualization inside TaxonWorks. There was a collecting event in Piatt County in Illinois. And we see that Tommy and, and Derek Hennon were on this trip. Here we can see Tommy, here we can see Derek. This is the collecting event. And we can see the collection object and the taxon name that was applied, who applied it, et cetera. Very quickly, happy to show this later. What if people get duplicated? And they do come in from different directions. We have a tool that allows you to uniquify or merge the people, what they did associated with a loan, a collecting event, a source, a taxon name, and then we can merge them all. Maybe you added a uh, birth and death year or something like that. We can merge all that data together. I'll leave this slide here for just a second. And this is certainly not a definitive list. So if you're intrigued by one of these, I'd love to talk more with you about how to do this work. There are models for doing this work now we can share with you that you can do as an individual in your lab, uh, in your institution. Um, and there's a lot of links that I can share about this. And what can you do? Get an identifier, work in Wikidata if that's your happy place, um, and please store and share uh, these identifiers. Thanks. Thanks, Debbie. That was a great overview. There's a lot more depth there. Uh, Debbie's been running cool workshops in conjunction with the Bionomia and other folks. Um, and I think if you haven't come across those or be exposed to those, I would exp I would be prepared to be to see them in your neighborhood soon. Uh, I think it's growing rapidly. The importance and uh, this 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 idea of training folks in these areas.